Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are going to check out two bore scopes and both are very awesome and very capable bore scopes. Each has their pros and cons and we're just going to dig into the specs and the uses of bore scopes. Now if you are unsure whether bore scopes are even worth your time, I will be showing examples of where a bore scope has saved me and my coworker a bunch of time. In, in some cases we can take a look at evaporator cores to see whether they are clogged or whether they are leaking. In another case we had a situation where we had noise coming from the flywheel area and I was suspecting loose bolt. Didn't have to disassemble anything, there was a tiny peephole. We could just stick a bore scope in there and find that there was in fact loose bolts. It is also pretty good for taking a look at rear main seals, whether they are leaking or an improper job has been done. It will be pretty easy to check that out. So if you finally decided whether a bore scope is for you, maybe these two, comparing these two might help you come to a more informed decision. I haven't seen much online as to the specifics about each of these cameras, but I hope this will help shed some light on the decision making. So let's get started. This one is the ME610. This one was purchased at Super Saturday. Oasis Scientific set up a booth over there and they were great. They showed a bunch of cameras and they were extremely helpful in the whole process. This one actually belongs to my coworker, and this is the VA980. It is the semi-rigid. We'll get into it and we'll go ahead and start off with opening them. Let's see what the process is for opening it. So you've got the scope, it's ready to go. I have been using it before so you just pull it out connected to something, you're ready to go. It is easy to take out, don't get me wrong, but there is a process to putting it back in. It's not just throw it back in and done. That's the only thing I can tell that would hold us back on this one. You're, you're gonna wanna wind this up, get it nice in there. That's the only way it's going to close again. Um, mind you, my coworker keeps all this stuff. I probably would put all this stuff somewhere else and <laughs> that's just my opinion on the matter really so that's that's my gripe with this one it's it's putting it back in getting it out is not an issue connecting it to something that takes what 30 seconds maybe but putting it back in to, to put it away that's that's where i find a bit of an issue now as for this one this one i think wins in this case because it is really a run and gun type situation so we go ahead and open it up everything's ready to go Take it out, hit the power button, and just pull it out. And we are pretty much ready to go in a couple seconds. So I think in that scenario, this one wins. And also, putting it back in is as simple as turning it off and lining everything up. I like to put my little protector here. That's just me. Maybe I will stop doing that eventually, but for now, I'm not going to. And done. Back in the box it goes. It's, it's really e easy and hard to waste any time uh, taking it out and putting it back in. So going back to the cases, you can see a huge difference in the size. That is one of the things that I like about this one here. This, that's where it wins. It goes in and out of the box like nothing. This one, on the other hand, you're going to have to have either a giant space ready for it or you it's staying outside but i made space for it it's huge so there is a trade-off when it comes to the convenience it is big but it is super convenient this one is super easy to stick in and out of the box but it can be a pain to uh, put it away in a timely manner i'll start with the focal distance the focal distance for this unit here is 30 to 400 millimeters as opposed to this one where it's five millimeters to a thousand millimeters. So essentially what that means is you can get a lot closer with this one and it'll still look good. And this one you may have to be off at a distance. I will show the comparison between the two in which both of them are taped together and where each of them starts to get blurry. Here we can see easily the thickness difference of each probe. The ME610 is about six millimeters thick and the VA980 is about 8.5 millimeters. They both have temperature ranges in which, you know, once you pass a certain temperature, 
they will start to act up on you. They start to throw a white image around the edges of the picture. That means you're overheating your, your sensor. But the temperature ranges of each of these is really not that much of a difference. This one maxes out at about 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll call this the running gun. The running gun maxes out at about 140. So really is not much of a difference uh, there. This one has a resolution of about 640 by 480. And this one has a resolution of about 960 by 720. This one obviously has a built-in monitor. There is an option to do an HDMI out. I haven't used it yet. The monitor is self-sufficient. It does a pretty good job. This one, the beauty of it is that you can hook it up to anything, just about anything, and it'll, it'll work for you. This one, there's no option to transfer files with a wire. This wire here is only to charge. The only option I have is to save it into the memory card and transfer it over to a laptop if I ever wanted to share the media. There is no other way. That's the only thing that's a bit of a setback when it comes to sharing. This one, on the other hand, you could have it connected already to a laptop and it saves immediately. It's instant saving and you can share it on the spot. This one has a magnetic base, which is nice. This one, it is all on you. Don't get me wrong, you may be able to lay it down and use it from there. The semi-rigid uh, capacity actually makes that a whole lot easier to do. And these days have changed. Most hoods used to be metal, ferrous metal, magnetic. Nowadays, we're getting more and more aluminum and, and composite materials. And the magnetic base is a nice touch, don't get me wrong, but with the way things are going, there's becoming more and more limited use for it. This one is waterproof. It's an IP67 rating. It is oil resistant. And this one, it's, to my knowledge, it is not waterproof. I'm sure it can hold up to a little tiny bit of moisture, but I wouldn't dare do it on purpose. I like that we can go ahead and review the files instantly. Once we hit the trigger, this one is a trigger to either take a picture or video and we can review them on the spot. So here we have some pictures that I took and it is instantaneous review. This one, if you're connected to the laptop, you're good to go. If you're connected to an hotel, you're good to go. You can review it instantly. Now we can talk about lighting. There are things I like about both of them. They are both plenty strong. The lighting, if you used bright enough, will heat up your camera a good amount. You can see the difference here. This one is brighter. Not that you need that much. And every time you change a setting, the, this has like an auto brightness adjustment going on here or a white balance. Something's, something's going on here where every time you hit the light, it adjusts the brightness of the camera. So it won't do you any good to be too bright. I'm going to put my finger right in front of it and I'm gonna go brighter and it adjust it down to a normal picture. It does it again there. I'm gonna to go to my max setting. You can see that the brightness comes back down. So no matter how bright it is, it automatically adjusts to be something that makes sense for the borescope. This one on the other hand, there was no brightness adjustment. This is a, uh, it's, it's what you see is what you get. One of the things I do like a lot about this one is the, there's no increment to the light adjustment. You could put it exactly how you want it. There, it's a knob. And I, I gotta say, I love that. This one is incremental. The auto brightness adjustment does come in handy. So I don't really have to worry about it too much. This one, when you're holding it, let's say you're looking at something, you have your brightness down here. You want to do, you want to make an adjustment, you may want to hold it differently to kind of do everything in one shot, but then you can't really articulate. So if you hold it like this, it may be the best way. I think that's the way they probably wanted everyone to deal with this. It's an easy setup and you could do everything all in one shot. This one on the other hand, it is all, it's all in one place. You don't have to maneuver anything. It is uh, pretty convenient when it comes to that. The trigger button does all of the recording functions, whether it's a picture or whether it's a video. It's pretty easy to use. And speaking of articulation, 
when I articulate, I have to bring it back myself. Not that that's an issue, but you do not want to be in a hurry inside of a combustion chamber and just yank on this thing. You will be in trouble. This one, on the other hand, it does it for you. It's spring loaded. It will come back as soon as you let it go if you have the lock feature off. This has a lock feature. When you have it in freelance mode, I guess you could call it, you press down, you, could, you can press down on this and tr twist it clockwise to keep it unlocked indefinitely. If you twist that clockwise and get out of there, it will lock. It's a nice feature, but no matter what, before you yank this bore scope out of a pit combustion chamber, you're going to want to hit that button right there just to play it safe. And while we're still talking about articulation, this one, I don't know if, it, if it's an issue with this scope or if all of them are like that, but that's the max articulation you got. If you go down, it's not the same radius. The highest articulation you could get from this particular scope is going all the way up. That's the best I could get. If I go to the right, it is not the same amount. If I go to the left, not the same amount. So up is the most articulation I could get out of this particular scope. That's where I think this one wins. You get a pretty tight radius. You can look at the cable itself. It is looking at its own cable. I have seldom been able to accomplish that with this scope here it will barely look at itself. Could be the way that I'm holding it, but right now it is just not doing it. So I think that's where this one wins. You get some serious, serious bending radius here. That's hard to beat. I gotta tell you, that is really hard to beat. Now this one obviously is battery operated. It's a standalone item. It's a four hour battery life. It's easily rechargeable. It takes 18650. They're super common. You can swap them out if you wanted to. But in order to do that, you would have to take off the base and remove the battery that way. They provide a screwdriver for that reason. But I'd rather just recharge it, keep it ready to go, instead of swapping out batteries like I would a flashlight. Now, while this is nice to have that 360 articulation, it can be a pain to snake your way into something you know, they do give you the option to rotate the screen. If you look at the screen, you hit this button and we'll rotate for you. But in my opinion, it, it is a bit of a pain to snake your way into something. This one does have a way to snake, snake into something and you can easily rotate this to get to where you're going. This one, on the other hand, if you want to snake your way in, you're going to have to move this entire thing. And sometimes space doesn't allow you. It's, it can get real tight, real easy. So this is just a minor thing, but I think that's where this one wins here. Now let's go ahead and get into some footage, shall we? So here we actually have both cameras lined up. We're looking into a small cylinder to compare to both. Here we have some stills. This one is the VA980 semi-rigid scope and then followed by the ME610, which you could tell from far away doesn't look as great. But let's take a look at some close-ups. This is back to the VA980, up nice and tight shot, and then back to the ME610, which does show where it truly shines. Here we have both scopes taped up together to show this comparison video. And we are going into an F-150 down the oil filler tube. And as you can see on the left, we have the 610. It is a more stable and a wider shot than the Able Scope. But the Able Scope in this case came out with an amazing shot, to be honest with you. And in this comparison, I wanted to show how much focal range you have. As you can tell on the left side, on the 610, it, you can really get close and get a lot of detail as opposed to the one on the right. The able scope, you do need to back up a little bit. You still have great amount of detail in both of them. Both are the great scopes. 
but the 610 shines when it's really close and it's not so great at a distance. And finally, we have a shot of a head gasket leak on a Suzuki. And the left is the 610 is a more stable shot. The rigid, the semi-rigid casing of the hose actually made it a little more difficult to keep it steady. So that's one of the things to consider. Uh, the 610 was actually pretty easy to maneuver and it, it does not get caught up on the threads of the spark plug hole. I hope you all enjoyed this one. Uh, if I missed anything, please let me know. Those of you who are on the fence about picking up a bore scope, I say do it. Uh, it is a great investment and will save you a ton of time. And I will let you decide on which one you like the most. I love them both. They are both great tools. Each of them have their place. Each of them have their benefits. Either one of the two is easy to grab, easier to grab. There are cases where the mobility of it all might trump in your decision making. Maybe you don't care to share instantly. Maybe you don't mind having to take out an SD card and place it in your laptop in order to share. Maybe these board scopes are not for you. Maybe they are just out of the budget and you want to go with something quick and dirty, uh, very inexpensive. I've been down that road and one way or the other, I had to keep coming back to the articulation. The articulation in itself is a big seller. I'm not sponsored by anybody. This is not a sales pitch. This is for technicians who are interested in getting one of these or getting a bore scope in general, and they just want to make a better decision. I hope this video accomplishes that in uh, enlightening the viewer as to what there is out there to offer. This is not a, I know the title says that it's a versus video, you know, this scope versus the other scope, but really it was not in any way meant to put them head to head. The price difference is pretty big. We've come to expect certain things w along with those price differences, but both are very capable scopes. And I don't want anybody to take this video as if like they were supposed to be head to head competition. And both are made by the same company. Both are sold by the same distributors. Great company. They don't know that I'm making this video. So if anybody thinks that I'm here on their behalf, I'm really not. I just, you know, when I believe in a good product, I put it out there and hopefully someone can benefit from this. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Hit share, like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you next time.